Hello, if you are currently watching this and don't know exactly what this is, this is the full uncut interview between myself and Dr. Lung Fong from NIST. Uh, that was featured, or at least portions of it were featured in my documentary on the Gerald F5 tornado from 1997. The reason why this is here is because I have a feeling that some people would be very interested in the full interview, and so this is the full interview to its date. Um, honestly, if you're watching this first, I don't know why you are, it's pretty much, uh, the context of this is going to make a lot more sense if you watch my documentary on Gerald first, which I have a link to in the description, and hopefully uh, cards are enabled on this channel, even though I only have five subscribers, which is right here. Um, this is probably where all my behind-the-scenes stuff is probably going to be going from here on out, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you enjoyed this, um, mainly subscribe to the main channel, because then I'll probably be able to do more stuff there. Um, and most importantly, thank you to NIST for allowing me to upload the full uncut interview. Um, they've been really nice about it, and they've been really cooperative with the production of this entire video. And I can't really have done this without them. So, yeah, that pretty much goes without saying. So, uh, with that being said, uh, here's the full interview. Oh, yeah, so, sorry in advance for the interview's, um, audio being whacked and all that. Uh, turns out OBS decided there was some stuff I had to edit for OBS for a live stream for Force 13 US uh, to make my voice more audible. Uh, that carried on to my default as well. So, my voice is gonna be really loud, and then his is gonna be quiet for part of the interview. Um, but midway through it should be fixed. So, um, that being said, uh, yeah, continue and hopefully you enjoy. First of all, thank you so much for your time. Um, I know you're very busy and all that, um, especially with all this going on, but it's been 25 years since Gerald, and I felt like it would be appropriate to talk to someone that who was there. And so I have my list of questions on my other monitor, and so uh, if you don't have any um, objections, I can go ahead and get this started. Oh, yes, please go ahead. And I'm very pleased to uh, talk with you uh, on this uh, uh, 25 years old uh event uh Grayson. um so just to kind of get some stuff out of the way in regards to your background at the national institute of science and technology um what disasters did you research before gerald happened yeah so so gerald actually was my first tornado damage survey uh prior to that event uh i have conducted um surveys uh of damage due to earthquakes um including the um 1989 uh, Loma Prieta earthquake, the 1994 Northridge earthquake, and after Jaro, uh, 1997, um, there were two international earthquakes that I um, conducted uh, survey and study uh, of. Uh, that was the 1999 Kochali, Turkey earthquake, and the 2011 Tohoku tsunami uh, and earthquake in Japan. Um, also, after JARO, I have conducted uh, damage surveys and studies of um, several more wind-related events um, beside the earthquakes. Uh, both uh, severe convective storms and um, tropical cyclones. Uh, these include the Orlando, Alabama, Spencer, South Dakota tornadoes, all in 1998. Uh, and then the Oklahoma City tornado in 1999 the uh, La Plata, Maryland tornado in um, 2002, and the Jablin tornado in 2011, of course, and, and the Moore, Oklahoma tornado in 2013 as well. So those um, were severe convective storm events. Uh, for Hurricane, I, I study Hurricane Katrina and Rita in 2005, Hurricane Irma in 2017, and Hurricane Michael most recently in 2018. So those are my cap damage um, survey background. So before Gerald, were there any issues with the Fujita scale that um, you noticed? And if there were any, what were the issues that you observed with the Fujita scale? Um, no, actually, um, Gerald was the first event that uh, that brought that situation up. Uh, that um, uh, observation of the the scale might be flawed in term of. Uh, relating the, um, the damage obse observed with the um, possible wind speed range that, can, that could cause the damage. Um, so no, there were no um, indication before, before Jero, Texas tornado that, uh, that, uh, that we could notice. Um, so there was no, no uh, attention to that uh, scale 
prior to uh, to Jero. And so, of course, the tornado happens on May 27th, and um, shortly thereafter, ground surveys and aerial surveys began being conducted. Uh, before leaving for Gerald, did anything really pique your interest or intrigue you about the damage done before you were on the ground and in the air, uh, just observing what happened that day? Um, before uh, conducting the ground survey, um, the 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 only thing that uh, that uh, would um, I think draw attention uh, our attention was the the high number of fatality. And the report in the media that uh, this was a violent uh, tornado. Um, uh, I, I wanted to know the circumstances that 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 caused this high number of fatalities, and and uh, how these that are related to the performance of the uh, the buildings. Um, so that that um, that was uh, our uh, objective and interest at the time uh, before we we got out to to Texas. So, could you describe in detail the damage that you saw in the Double Creek Estates Division specifically? Um, mainly because, and this kind of goes into the question afterward, is that it's considered to be some of the most violent damage that we've seen from a tornado. Um, pointing to reports from coroners saying they had trouble identifying bodies due to pieces of bodies just being thrown all around, and the complete and total lack of small debris in the areas that were affected. So, what exactly did you see on the ground and in the air? Yes, yeah, so it it it's been twenty five years now, so it's not easy to describe the damage in 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 detail. But I remember the um, uh, the Double Creek uh, Estate uh, subdivision is where the tornado damage path width got widened to its maximum um, uh, width, right uh, about three quarter of a mile. Uh, this is also where most of the um, uh, fatalities occur in the, this uh, subdivision. Um, what I remember, the structure there consisted mainly of uh, single family wood frame construction, about 15 years old, so it's not, it not own construction, uh, of typical slab on grade construction type, uh, wood frame on top of a, uh, a concrete slab. Uh, there were no basement uh, or um, or above ground or underground shelter that uh, that uh, that we could see uh, there because of the geology of the um, area. Uh, it was very visible from the air that most of the houses uh, uh, in this subdivision uh, had been swept clean from the foundation. It, it's very striking. You could see um, slab after slab after slab from about 100, 200 meter. Um, um, helicopter hovering above the subdivision, uh, we could see that um, everything wiped clean off of the uh, foundation. So that those are what I remember. Um, uh, in terms of scale, um, Grayson, uh, the uh, the damage uh, here is uh, uh, from Jaro is limited to this subdivision of about 40, 45 structure, I believe. Um, it, it, it's rather smaller scale. Um, I'm not saying it less violent, but it's rather smaller scale compared to a number of other tornadoes I've seen where, you know, up to 1,000 of structure damage uh, instead of just 40. Um, Joplin uh, is one example. Uh, more Oklahoma is in another. So um, it's limited in scale, but, uh, but uh, the damage was total for the subdivision. So... Was there anything that you noticed that was unusual in regards to the behavior of the path, um, especially considering its movement of being, according to some reports, being nearly stationary over the subdivision for about anywhere from two to three minutes? Um, and did that possibly have any contribution to the total damage compared to, let's say, if it was moving at a faster speed? Yeah, um, uh, I've seen more unusual tornado damage, Pat. Uh... And behavior in in other tornado where suddenly there are nine degree ninety degree sharp turn by the tornado, um, um, so so this this particular one zero zero Texas tornado, the overall path and behavior seem to be uh, normal. It it's kind of slow moving based on uh, witnesses that we interview. Um, 
And 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 the the slow moving tornado uh, actually uh, uh, would cause a lot more damage because of prolonged exposure to this tornado wind field and debris um, uh, uh, field also. So definitely uh, a slower moving tornado would incur more uh, damage to the environment than 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 a fast moving tornado for sure. And so. The tornado gets rated F5, and it seems it's done, it's all over. And then you release your report in 98 um, right. with Simu. And I read through all of it. <laughs> um, definitely was a very fun discussion in my chemistry class that day. But I, note, I, I see noting that random inspections um, or more of poor construction quality um compared to what they should have been according to the building codes at the time and it's also stated that um i forgot the county name but the county hadn't adopted the new building codes put in place yet um so there were no anchor bolts whatsoever right and how significant of an impact did the revelations of finding out that oh these um there were not very strong connections in between the sail plates and the foundations and some of the foundations were just nailed in and so how did that exactly contribute to the revelation that eventually could leads to your conclusion that Gerald couldn't be rated higher than F3 based on the damage there? And if those building codes were put in place, do you think that we could have seen something different out of Gerald? Uh, yes, it's likely. Um, uh, to, to answer your last question, um, the, the, the problem is, is this. Um, it were rated an F5 based on the observed damage um, in accordance with the F scale at the time by the National Weather Service. And and we we and the National Weather Service don't see things differently at all. They their job is to um, uh, to uh, they, they are tasked with uh, rating tornado. Um, so they have the tool they use is the Fujita scale. And based on the damage classification, the discipline of damage that they have, uh, it clearly to them an F5. Um, and, and we, uh, and it's not uh, their opinion. They are doing their job using this, the, the tool that available to them. They, the, the, the problem with that is um, uh, the tool is flawed. So that we, we point out, if you look at this damage description, we cannot um, tell the difference in terms of wind speed based on the quality of the construction. Um, you might come up with um, an over classification. Uh, an over classification of tornado corrupt the tornado data database, uh, which eventually lead to the design criteria that is so substantially higher than um, um, actuality um, and that caused everyone to throw their hand up and say, we cannot design for tornado, it, it's too strong. And that would become an excuse for, um, for builder, designer, constructor to continue to build weak structure um, uh, and that keep getting damaged uh, due to um, wind speed that we think could be designed for. Um, the reason, what, what we saw in um, Jaro uh, and uh, conclude that is doesn't need to take an F5 to call this kind of damage that we observe. Uh, because what you, you pointed out, um, the connection between the seal plate from the upper, uh, up, uh, between the upper structure and the foundation was not um, uh, by anchor bolt. It was um, uh, pneumatically driven nails, right? Um, which, uh, uh, by engineering calculation, it wouldn't take the wind speed that um, associated with an F5 tornado to cause the damage. In our calculation, the wind speed of an F3 tornado would call, would overcome three times the safety factor of those kind of, that, that kind of structure that uh, that were in general. Therefore, we what we said was, we don't need to explain that an F5 caused the damage that observed. 
the wind speed that associated with an F3 tornado could easily cause the same damage that we observed. We don't have the measurement. We're just saying that by looking at these damage, it's not necessary to conclude is an F5. It, it can easily be done by an F3. That's what we are saying by cal engineering calculation. Um, so um, I think your, your question is, uh, by multiple questions, I'm not sure I address all them all. Um, Grayson, if I miss anything, let me know. Um, it, it that covers pretty much all of it right okay. there. Um, the one thing that a lot of my uh weather friends have kind of pointed to was images of steel plumbing pipes being ripped through the concrete foundations of some of the houses. Um, yeah. was that observed or um conclusive of anything stronger than what uh the rest of the damage indicated? Uh, not necessarily conclusive of that. Um, we, we, in fact, um, uh, you mentioned random inspection before. We actually look at uh, all the 40 structure that got wiped out foundation there uh, in the um, uh, Double Creek subdivision. And uh, by the way, you mentioned also um, uh, the um, the the uh, subdivision, the the county, uh, William Sutton County, I think, uh, right. where Gerald were located. Yeah, they was at the time considered uh, unincorporated, meaning they are not. Uh, required to adopt uh, a building code, uh, so that you know c construction there, even though they were 15 years old at the time, they were not necessarily in complying with building code requirement. Um, we did not see the steel plumbing pipes um, that that you 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 send uh, the, the link. I, I look at the picture; I couldn't tell what uh, what it was, uh, but um, but. On that date, uh, on those days when we were there, we did not see we, or notice any plumbing pipes being ripped through the um, concrete foundation. Um, we could not discern that. I couldn't discern it from the, the, the photo that, that you, you sent. But even if that occur, um, uh, it would also depend on what is connected to those pipes, right? Um, uh, to get it pulled up the foundation. So it still wouldn't necessarily take wind stronger than an F3 to induce that kind of damage, uh, in my opinion. And so the whole way this report is kind of laid out and explains itself, a lot of this is very similar to what we use today with the enhanced Vegeta scale. And so that being said, was this one of the first times that something like this was done in regards to recording tornado damage? And exactly how do you think, and I'll get into more of the process of the creation of it later, um, was there anything like this report? No, actually, that was the first time when speed estimation were done, um, um, it was done independently. And um, uh, uh, and it preceded uh, the subsequent effort to develop the enhanced Fujita scale, and and you also in in your question that you said also mentioned the NIST current uh, NIST ASCE current effort to um, to do wind, tornado wind speed estimation also. So this was the very first um, attempt uh, to correlate the damage with uh, a realistic wind speed range uh, that. Uh, by engineering calculation would incur, would induce those damage. Um, so um, uh, the, the, the current, the enhanced Fujita scale uh, development process um, kind of pattern trying to, to adopt this a little bit to quantify the wind speed range associated with uh, each of the, uh, the rating. But um, uh, in short, the, the answer to the question is was done uh, independently. Uh, we did that. Uh, using engineering calculation. And so looking further onto this and looking now, um, you kind of answered this earlier in regards to why the National Weather Service, because until they retired the Fujita scale in 2007, uh, they kept Gerald as an F5. And right. so is there something there that they see that you don't in regards to why they kept it there? Or is it still the Fujita scale itself was flawed to begin with? Yeah, but, uh, uh, I believe the Fujita scale is flawed to begin with. Uh, no, we, we, I, I don't. Uh, they kept us in F five, and I don't believe we are seeing different things uh, with them. Uh, it's again, uh, I mentioned earlier, it's the procedure that that uh, the weather service had to follow. Uh, their task is to rate tornadoes using the Fujita scale at the time. That's the tool they have, 
And based on the damage description of the Fujitsu scale, uh, it's the rating they have to select. Uh, if I were to use that scale uh, 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 in the same way without engineering background, we anyone could have picked uh, the, the same rating. Um, upper structure wipe up of the foundation F5. That is in accordance uh, to the scale. Uh, so uh, I also understand that uh, one a rating has been assigned by the National Weather Service. It's not easy to retract uh, and assign a different rating. Uh, the issue is the, again the lim limitation of the scale, uh, not not our opinion, uh, not the Weather Service opinion. They use the scale correctly. Um, uh, it's the tool available to them. It's just that the scale, the tool is flawed. Um, so, so we, 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 we don't see that. And actually now um, in, in the wind speed estimation committee, ASC NIST, um, wind speed estimation committee, you see many meteorologists um, um, uh, working with us to, to, to correct this situation, so. Um, your camera did cut out. <laughs> oh, really? Um, oh, sorry. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Is it, is it back? It's back now. You know, we, we are just, um, call back uh, to work after a long uh, period of maximum tailored work. And uh, as supervisor, we, we are called back um, uh, first um, beginning on the 25th of April. And from that time on to now, uh, I mean, that that the first time I used my desktop for uh, after two and a half years, two more, more than two years. Um, I discover a lot of things that not working and a lot of IT problem, but and so my apology. Um, and so looking back nearly a little over 24 years after this report has come out, do you, and I'm pretty sure you are, I already got the answer for this one, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, I'm pretty sure you already stand by the conclusions of the report on Gerald. And more importantly is what do you, or what are you most proud of with this report? What do you think could have been better? And was there anything that you don't agree with the paper looking back nearly 24 years ago? Yeah, that, that that's a good question. Uh, I definitely, uh, we, we, we stand by our conclusion in that paper. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't want to say that I'm proud of any of my reports, um, but I am very happy uh, uh, that uh, this report on JARO and others um, associated publications since have served as, uh, I believe, impetus for revision and the up upgrade of the um, Fujita scale um, to improve it, to become first the enhanced Fujita scale, and now um, is in the process of um, uh, getting further improvement. Um, again, again uh, the, the, we have the very strong need to uh, correlate the wind speed cause the, the observed damage uh, by tornado. Uh, and the simple reason is uh, uh, tornado, when we misclassified tornado and entered into the record, uh, the, the tornado database, which will be used by um, structural engineer and, and statistician to develop the design criteria for tornado. And if we misclassify tornado um, in, um, in the, um, uh, conservative way, meaning we over classify uh, tornado intensity. The desired criteria become um, um, uh, biased um, um, in, in, in that the load for structural design would be unrealistically high. Uh, and therefore, uh, that would lead to, again, the, the, the natural reaction. This, we cannot design for this because the load is so high. Um, this should be considered an act of God. We don't want to design for tornado and therefore we just accept, you know, tornado damage um, uh, going forward. So that, that's the reason, that's the motivation. Uh, I'm very happy that the whole uh, engineering community now is moving toward designing for tornado and we are able to characterize the tornado hazard uh, accurately um, uh, using accurate data in the tornado um, uh, database. And so, and this is yet again, probably gonna be more reaffirmation because my questions are like that woo. 
Um, according to the Storm Prediction Center, because whenever they their article on the Enhanced Vegeta Scale cites two tornadoes, they cite more ninety nine and then Gerald. Yeah. Um, and then looking further into more reports about the development of the Enhanced Vegeta Scale up until its release in two thousand seven. Uh, kept repeating your report with Simu, and so my question for you is that how significant of an impact do you think that your report had to the change towards the scale, and was it more of the straw that broke the camel's back, or was it the one that finally just showed everything that was there? Yeah, um, I, I don't know if the problem inherent in the um, uh, the Fujita scale at the time was well known at the time uh, until we articulated um, uh, it in um, using the the, the um, uh, Jaro study. Uh, so it's hard for me to say it was a straw that uh, that broke the the camel's back. Um, it definitely provided the impetus and, and, and galvanized the wind engineering community to move forward with the revision and development of the EF scale for sure. And, and the fact that it's cited in these uh, very influential um, um, uh, paper that you mentioned by the Weather Service and by, uh, I, I think the other one is uh, Texas Tech University, um, uh, meant that uh, is, it, it really uh, provide um, um, Maybe the first justification for for moving forward with uh, with revising the um, uh, the scale. So I'm I'm very glad that that happened. Um, I, I think it more up the situation where the engineering community realized there's a problem with the um, the the scale, uh, the implication of that problem, and uh, you know joined force in 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 making uh, in improving it. Um, it's it not that people know it on along and now it, it, uh, general happened. So time to act. It's not a straw that uh, broke the camel, camel's back in my opinion. Um, did you have any role in the development of the enhanced Vegeta scale at all? Uh, yeah, so I was part of the NIST and the NIST team that, uh, articulated the problem. Um, public, uh, publicizing it, uh, uh, formulated the need for an improved uh, tornado rati uh, rating uh, scale, and actually work uh, within NIST to provide funding for NIST grantee. Uh, in this case, Texas Tech University, uh, their involvement was uh, coming from um, our funding at the time uh, to work on this specific problem of uh, developing uh, the improved scale for um, in, uh, in in collaboration with the National Weather Service. Um, uh, I were also serving on the committee um, that Texas Tech University put together that include uh, uh, yeah, um, you know people um, wind engineer from uh, Texas Tech University, meteorologists from National Weather Service. Structural engineer, wind engineer from NIST. Um, so this committee uh, come together um, under this grant that NIST gave to Texas Tech University uh, to develop the EF scale. So that's my involvement. Um, uh, I guess I can say I, I initiated um, and and formulate and 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 the, the the issue. And so, in 2015, Mark Sadef on Twitter um, released a video saying that. The ACE and NIST were develop developed a committee to update the scale. Um, so, just talking more generally about the enhanced Vegeta scale, what do you think it does right? What do you think needs some improvement on? And what are the issues? And if so, how should they be addressed? Yeah, yeah, that's also a very good question. Um, as I have mentioned, the um, EF scale is an improvement over the F scale. Uh, is more helpful to the meteorologists and has been adopted by the, the Weather Service, as you mentioned in 2007, as the official tool for tornado rating. Um, but it doesn't mean uh, that uh, it's uh, perfect. Um, uh, in our investigation of the uh, 2011 Joplin, Missouri tornado, uh, we concluded that the Enhan Fujita scale still lacks um, adequate damage indicators. Um, and um, corresponding degrees of damage for distinguishing among the uh, the most um, intense 
uh, tornado events. Uh, and these lack of um, damage indicator or DI in, in the um, uh, enhanced Fujita scale and degree of damage uh, or DOD. Uh, and overall nature of the EF scale still requires subjective um, non-quantitative assessment of tornado damage. Um, another issue is the current EF scale has no path forward, no path forward for improvement because no one owns the development, development of it, uh, um, not even Texas Tech. Take. So it, it is stagnant. It's adopted by the weather service, but no one really owns it to have the responsibility to, um, to, to uh, revise it. So the, the, the effort you refer to the SCE Standard Committee on Wind Speed Estimation uh, examine all measurement data uh, beyond the EF scale, right? Uh, including Doppler radar data, um, analytical technique, um, uh, the, 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 the similar to what we've done for the Jarrow Texas tornado estimation uh, of wind speed that cause certain damage including forensic engineering uh, to provide now science-based quantification for the wind speed that uh, associated with the observed damage. So that's the effort with the ACE right now uh, moving forward. It go beyond the EF scale. It, um, uh, in, in short, it try to look at um, all available data, Doppler, radar, uh, forensic engineering, analytical techniques, get to come up with uh, quantification validation of the wind speed range that associate with certain damage that we observed. So when completed, it would be another improvement to the EF scale. So that that where we are moving uh, forward to. And so just to kind of end this off, do you have any other comments in regards to your report or just Gerald general in general? Um, no. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to 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 um, to speak with you on, on this though, uh, and and uh, it's still a very um, even though we we keep saying this the 25 years old um, issue, um, it is very relevant in terms of what we are doing today in in tornado resistant design, uh, the standardization and the codification of that that all have root in this one particular event uh not not just um uh, the app scale to the EF scale to the new wind speed estimation standard we are working on right now but it affect the uh, tornado climatology of the country it affect how we characterize uh, tornado hazard for structural design and it affect the design of the structure to resist those um, uh, tornado hazards so um, it's all connected and it's still very relevant. And I'm very happy to talk with you today, um, Grayson, on this. All right. Well, that concludes.